All right, well, that's good. Let's move on to Theater 2. Princess Mononoke from 1997, starring Yoji Matsuda, Yuriko Ishida, and Yuko Tanaka, directed by Hayao Miyazaki. Yet again, we are giving this guy lots of play on the show. Three movies in a row. It's the hat trick. The Miyazaki hat trick. The Miyazaki hat trick. You know, it's interesting, though, this Miyazaki character. I have, I feel a certain kinship with him because I feel like we have uh, a similar dichotomy in our brains where he seems to be obsessed with nature, yet also technological progress. And that's sort of what I struggle with, where I'm sort of obsessed with, of course, nature and biodiversity and also Star Trek. So I'm sort of in, in, in that weird Miyazaki place myself. <laughs> yeah um yeah princess mononoke uh i i i think this is the first actual anime film i can re like remember watching um like as far as anime goes in my history of it it's like my mom was big into it and she still is to this day like my mom's a big anime fan so like I would watch, you know, like Sailor Moon with her, Dragon Ball Z, she'd watch that one with me. Um we got into like Geiger and stuff like this. Um and then yeah, she she came home with Princess Mononoke one time. And it was like the first anime feature film. And I saw it. And I was like amazed, uh kind of, you know, terrified by some of the scenes that I saw, but like I didn't really take the film in. Um, but I did remember enjoying it. So rewatching it the second time, um, man, I just really got to enjoy that film. Like it, from the beginning to the end. Um, I need to say about the second time, cause I had to watch this movie twice cause I watched it once and it had the, what I call the anime effect on me where I was just like, what was that? And I'm like, what did I just spend an hour and a half on? Just like. Anime just always seems to come at me like a bunch of scenes. I never care about any of the characters. I'm just like, what was that? And so, but I'm like, I got the environmental message. So I'm like, I, and I, I realized there was imagery and stuff that I wasn't getting. So I did a little research on like Japanese folklore and such. And then I watched the movie again. And it made a lot more sense the second time I watched it. And, uh, like the analogies are good but there's a lot it is actually a pretty pretty deep movie there's a lot going on but like you know it's easily to get confused because all of a sudden there's little like woodland little ghost spirits wandering around and you're like now what what the shit was that and they don't explain anything which is why like the well, research they, they... i did and then the rewatch helped i'm like like you don't really get told what anything is uh, no, they 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 do they do a pretty good explanation of like explaining uh, the what were they called again the uh, kokoros or something like that. Kokoros, kokoros, kokoros. Uh, what were they called? Man, that's gonna bug me. Anyway, yeah, they were like it was like K something. Oh, kodamas. That's right. They were called kodamas. Yeah. They called them kodamas. They were like little forest spirits that oh, tree indicated spirits. that the forest yeah, yeah. yeah like tree spirits that indicated like the the forest was safe yeah. and perfectly fine um they're they, yeah they i feel like they had enough exposition when they came to explaining certain it was fine on second elements. rewatch it's a yeah. good thing i rewatched it because if i'd only watched this movie once i probably would have been trashing it <laughs> but i yeah. didn't i watched it twice and it's not bad See, I'm glad you did watch it twice because I felt like I feel like out of all of these animes, this is the one you probably would have enjoyed the most, just because of the environmental themes about it and how you know it's. You I, know, I find the environmental themes get a little bit lost in this. Oh well, yeah, it's, there's a I lot mean, of shades of gray in this movie because like, there's just a lot. Just a lot of it's just that there's a lot going on. I don't mind shades of gray. I mean, it's it's a hell of a like. <laughs> this is like what friggin James Cameron wishes he made with Avatar. Like, yes, it's the same yes. themes, but this actually has d deep explorations of those themes and, you know, more mythical imagery and things like that and historical imagery and stuff. So it's more fascinating. It's not just like dreadful and boring like Avatar. 
and yeah. derivative. It doesn't feel so derivative, even though it is a common theme. It's that, you know, uh, tech, tech, technology and progress bumping heads with nature. And, you know, usually somebody caught in the middle that theme. It's been done again and again. You know, I, I for me... Like, on the scale of movies with this theme, there's, like, you know, Avatar at the bottom. Then there's probably this. This is a good movie. And then, you know, slightly above that, you have Medicine Man. But, like, they're all, like, the same movie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they all have that that sort of theme. Like, this is a way... This is just way more confusing Medicine Man. Instead of a guy... (laughs) Instead of of a guy uh, searching for a cure for cancer in the jungle, it's a guy searching for a cure for his own illness that his he's demon. succumbed to yeah woo well, or whatever it's, but I it's, think... it's basically just medicine man i i like his, don't the, entirely the disagree strive. with that statement but no, no it's, it's the same movie but medicine man's a, and this is a good version of that theme too like medicine man in this movie might be the two best movies with that theme that i've seen well you know dances with wolves is good too and fern gully never mind those four Yes, it's it's not Avatar. Mm. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. There's there's a few things. Let's let's just catch up on this trailer. Let's get right. rolling. Yeah. From oh, shit. <laughs> Whoa, what's Oops. going on there, Murphy? Don't know what happened there. I meant to hit the audio. Sorry. From Wasn't Master me. Animator was... Miyazaki, the visionary oh, oh. that crosses all cultures, Sprites. and one of the most influential yeah. filmmakers of all time, comes a simply breathtaking motion picture event. Princess Mononoke, one of the year's best films, featuring the voices of Gillian Anderson, Billy Crudup, Claire Danes, Minnie Driver, Jada Pinkett Smith, and Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> Hearing that Billy Bob Thornton's voice come out of that guy is funny. Walk the earth, an epic battle rages between man and the gods of the forest. Now, the fate of the world rests on the courage of one fearless princess. I'm not afraid to die, and I would do anything to get the humans out of here. And one brave warrior. What exactly are you here for? To see with eyes unclouded by hate. Fire! Yeah, I just watched the sub version of this one. But I didn't even hear Billy Bob. Yeah, I too watched the subversion of this one, right? Um, but I pulled out the dubs because we got clips to show, right? Um, and yeah, hearing Billy Bob Thornton's voice was kind of hilarious. That would have been weird. I, maybe that would have been enjoyable. Fate, I however, you can rise to meet it if you choose. The funny thing was that the film starts off with Goliath's voice narrating the opening. Yeah, they're gonna attack us with a forest monster. Billy Bob <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's, man. that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it's it's know. super weird. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, the, the 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 scene that like just made me like curl back though is when she's just like chewing the meat and baby bird feeding him like the chewed up meat. I'm like, that's <laughs> all he's gonna do is choke to death. You're not helping this guy. Like, what are you doing? Right. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's a CPR trope, but with baby bird feeding meat. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. Well, why don't you why don't you give us the old Plotsky? Yeah, so Princess Mononoke 1997. Princess Mononoke is an epic and visually stunning animated film that tells the story of a young prince caught in a battle between humans and the forces of nature. Set in the Miramashi period of Japan. Uh, The film explores themes of environmentalism, humanity's relationship with nature, and the complexities of war. The film follows the journey of Ashitaki, uh, played by Yoji Matsuda, uh, a courageous, and in the English version, Billy Crudup, a courageous and compassionate prince from the Imishi tribe. Um, After saving his village from a rampaging demon, Ashitaki becomes cursed by its deadly touch. Uh, Seeking a cure and answers, he sets out on a quest to find the source of the curse, and understand the I'm conflicts there, uh, plaguing the land. Hey, yeah. hey, Eamon, if you're still listening, give her another shot. Hey, uh, Jody, if Eamon doesn't show up, 
feel free yeah, to Yeah, Jody, it. come on in. Uh, I'll, I'll actually, you know what, Jody, if you're Since still you've here. you've seen all three of these movies. Yeah, Jody, come on. Come on. Did he, did he see, has he seen Redline? That'd be amazing. He, he says they're all good, so he must have saw them all. Um, yeah, Eamon's, uh, Eamon is, a, is officially bowed out. His internet is not working. Has he? Uh, I, yeah, yeah he's he says there's no point and he's not going to be able to come back. So, Jody, if you want to step in, door's open. Um, that sucks, Eamon. We'll get you on another one. Well, you're already booked yeah. for like the mobster one, so you'll be back. Yeah, we'll we'll get it. We'll get him back. Um, so yeah, uh, in the war torn land, Ashitaki's journey leads him uh, deeper into conflict between humans and the mystical creatures of the forest, uh, uh, where he comes across in his journeys looking for. For his cure, he comes across uh, a group of samurai attacking a town. Um, and this is actually my favorite clip of the movie. This is the movie where, where I kind of forgot this scene was in it. And I was like, whoa, that was awesome. Is this the boar attack? No, this is like the the scene where he's getting shot at and chased. Oh, yeah. And then he pulls out the bow and arrow and just wrecks guys. <laughs> you stop! Oh, yeah, that scene, I was just like, what? Look at him when he takes the guy's arms off. Let me pass! I'm warning you! Clap. Man, this guy's just, just brutal with a boat. I'll admit the so movie got my attention with this scene. <laughs> a demon. A demon. Yeah, no, that scene was like, it woke me up. I was like, oh, man, I forgot about this whole scene. This scene was badass. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that, that bugs me about that scene is he, his arm is cursed. He's holding the bow with his arm, and he's drawing with his other arm. How does that power translate? Would it not be like this? This one's got all the power that's releasing. Like, it's not like... It it doesn't it, the the physics of it didn't quite make sense to me. I feel like if his hand positioning was different, then the the force the the bow was going would make more sense. But because he's oh, holding the there's a the fair bit bow, of physics in this movie that doesn't make sense. You know what? That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um. So yeah, that was my favorite scene. Absolutely, just won me over. Um. So yeah, uh, we find Ashitaki. He's about to get some food from a lady, uh, like a bag of rice or something he wants to give her a gold nugget and she's like i want money um this the character is billy bob thornton's character i, I don't actually didn't get the name of this guy but um yeah billy bob's good enough uh, ashitaka's journey takes him to the industrialized iron town led by the determined uh lady iboshi played by mini driver and yurika ishida uh he learns that uh, Lady Eboshi, the leader of Iron Town, is determined to exploit the resources of the forest, including uh, killing the forest gods, to advance her town's technological progress and defend it from rival factions. However, Ashitaki also discovers that the forest is not without its own protectors. Uh, Princess Mononoke, also known as San, played by Claire Danes or Yuriko Ishidi, Ishara, uh, is a fierce and independent young woman raised by the wolf goddess Moro, played by Jillian Anderson, or Akihiro Miwa, which is a male actor. Um, kidnapped by the wolf goddess Moro, but yes, continue. Kidnapped slash adopted, we'll say. Uh, <laughs> she's she's determined to defend the forest and its inhabitants from humans' destruction. Um, San has a deep hatred for humans uh, due to the harm they've caused to the uh, natural world. Um, yeah, we're, we have that in common. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is actually where we would get to uh, to um, Eamon's clip. Is this, this one. This is his favorite clip. Was when San uh, attacks Sarah. Iron Town. The wolves are coming! Get that iron down. The kid can move. I'll give her that. Mm -hmm. I like this scene as well. She's kicking the shit out of Iron Town. 
Right. <laughs> but again, that's the contradiction of Miyazaki and myself. Without Iron Ta Town, there's no Starship Enterprise. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's um, so, yeah. Ashitaki uh, eventually, uh, you know, uh, decides to intercept San as she. There was a really good fight scene between San and Lady Iboshi, which I was all for. They were going at it, and then Ashitaki kind of stops them. And, like, he's like, I'm walking out of this place. And he, like, uses his strength to push open the giant wooden door. And they're like, he's just going to die. It's like, it's impossible. Um, man, that whole scene was just a lot of fun. Um, as the conflict escalates, Nashitaki finds himself torn between his loyalty to his people and his growing admiration for San's passionate defense of nature. Uh, he tries to act as a mediator between the warring parties, seeking a peaceful resolution that will preserve both human and animal lives. Uh, in his quest for a cure to his curse and a path towards peace, Ashitaki encounters various mythical creatures such as Kodama, small forest spirits, and the enigmatic deer god. He learns about the delicate balance of nature and the consequences of disrupting it. Um, in the climax of final battle, the forces of Iretown, I'm going to be doing it of skipping here but yeah the forces of iron clash with the guardians of the forest led by sun and moro uh the conflict reaches its tipping point as the forest gods and the wrath of nature are unleashed upon the humans after lady Iboshi shoots the head off the deer god turning it into the night walker it uh it chases after its head killing all life in its wake eventually uh san and ashitaki retrieve and return the deer god's head, or it becomes whole before falling on Iron Town and blessing land and all those who survived. Um, which, you know, we get to your favorite scene uh, of the film, I believe. Hopefully, I got it right this the time. Last scene? <laughs> yeah. Even if all the trees return, it won't be his forest anymore. The great forest spirit is dead now. Never. He's life itself. He's not dead, son. He's here right now, trying to tell us something. That it's time for both of us to live. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, time for both that of them out, to live. Like halfway through, though, like I didn't like that was different in the dub. That it was different. And, and, That's and the, the difference the between sub dub and sub. The sub, he's like, it's no longer the deer god's forest, but in the English yeah, dub, they're like, it's no longer his forest or whatever, and it doesn't have the same yeah, punch. Yeah. Like, there's certain lines that they need to No, deliver. they're like, don't worry, the forest will grow back. And he's just like, yeah, but it won't be the deer god's forest. And the reason I like that line is because, again, that's the whole, uh, the medicine man thing, the whole uh, biodiversity crisis is just like, if, as soon as you disturb the web, the forest and the nature may grow back, but it won't be the same. It, some, some things will be missing. It'll be a puzzle with missing pieces. And true. other things it's will true. grow in to take those pieces, but it's again, it's a loss. It's a loss. It's the the purity of that forest is gone. Yeah, yeah. It's just never going to be quite the same again. Yeah, yeah no, and Sad. yeah, that's that's basically Mononoke ends with a with a new forest, new lands, and everyone's again. This is Medicine Man, and they both end sad. They both end with the forest on fire, and them being like, "Yep, well." Maybe those ants are out there somewhere. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, man. You're starting to like Medicine Man more now, aren't you, now that we're talking about these comparisons? <laughs> you can go back and we can make Medicine Man an A-movie, Murphy. Think about it. Maybe you need to watch it a second time. I watched Mononoke twice. Maybe you need to watch Medicine Man twice. It's only fair, I think. Well... We are all about fairness here, aren't we, upholders? Yes. <laughs> upholders. Yeah, um, that's what I'm calling them. Right. But yeah, all right. Well, let's let's uh, let's talk yeah. about uh, the, the plot storytelling. I mean, it was dense. It was dense, and like that's why I needed to watch it a second time. I needed to understand Japanese folklore and and mythology a little better because I think again those are things that would you would just pick up immediately if you were a Japanese watcher of this I would assume it's just like so it's just easy I mean I don't know I I don't know that much about Japanese folklore but like I was able to basically follow it I mean like you know one name rose by any uh, rose by any other name is still a rose you know like um, yeah, so but to me it was just a lot of uh well, 
a lot of mythical beings and like there's okay so there's like a wolf god and there's tree spirits and there's a deer god and there's just like it's a lot of different and there's a a, a pig with worms all over it and there's like there's a lot well, the the pig with Weird worms things. all over it. The the pig with worms all over it was like a dead pig, and those are the evil spirits that have like taken over its body. So the no, it wasn't a dead things. pig. It was an angry pig. Well, it was, a he pig was that technically got poisoned by a bullet, and so it became consumed with hatred and fear, and that's what, what the worms represented. Yes, but they, they, just, they I understand. They, this they is mentioned that shit. it was dead sometimes. <laughs> like they they did mention that it was dead sometimes. Like like it, it had died. And became like the evil spirit pig that you know caused all the chaos and stuff like that. Hey, but you know, uh, it, it's good. It's good storytelling. It's a, a better version of Avatar for sure. Yeah, it's the best version of Avatar. <laughs> you know, there with Medicine Man and Fern Gully. <laughs> uh, fuck. We'll get we'll get Fern Gully into the show at some point. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 yeah, it tells a good story and it's it mixes mythology with original ideas, so it doesn't lean too heavily on the mythology and become trapped by that or anything like that. Apparently, it takes a lot from a a manga called Mud Men. Really? Yeah, like you know, like a lot from it. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Which performance would you hold up? Um, I want to say San, uh, but I also like the character that Billy Bob Thornton's care like plays the like the little old mm. priest man. I, I I enjoyed his like antics and his like smarter than everybody else, getting shit done kind of attitude and the way he was able to just like run on two pieces of fucking wood <laughs> like his shoes were so <laughs> they made no sense but he was just like nimble as fuck with them um so yeah probably those two characters for me but probably the old man more so than son yeah i'm gonna have to pretty much agree with your assessment there like i didn't care also, about the main character really at all i also did like, like lady the, the Emotion dude a lot too the the dude who's like searching for the cure did not care about him. He was know. honestly he's the weakest, even though he's like the main protagonist, he's the weakest of all the characters. But that's kind of like the protagonist role in most films. It's just like you're there to Ooh, I, give oh the my. other characters like reason to interact and shit, right? So I think it's supposed to be the other way around. The other characters are supposed to enhance and move along the main character protagonist's yeah. journey. But I don't know. I think that's where it failed a little. Yeah. Uh, setting aesthetic, very beautiful. Gorgeous. It's just yeah. the most beautiful film. Like, <laughs> compared to the good. next film, it's it's like... In the previous can't. one, it looks way better than Totoro. And Totoro oh, looks yeah. good. But like, yeah. like, time advancement does that film well, and it yeah. just... Ten years. So years, gorgeous. So, so gorgeous. Every frame. Pretty much, yeah. All right, well, let's get into some movie morsels. All righty, movie morsels for Princess Mononoke from 1997. Hmm? Feed you, I'll feed you. Uh, so for the movie most of Princess Mononoke 1997, uh, when Harvey Weinstein obtained the North American distribution rights to Princess Mononoke, he approached director Heya Miyazaki and insisted on a shorter version of the film that would be better attuned to American audiences. However, Miyazaki was still so upset by the heavily cut version of his, uh, Nausicaade of the Valley of the Wind from 1984 released as warriors of the wind that he angrily left the meeting several days later studio ghibli producer toshio suzuki sent a katana sword to weinstein's office with no cuts embedded into the blade the film was later released in the usa in its uncut version when asked about the incident in an interview miyazaki simply smiled and stated i defeated him <clears throat> yeah probably should have really just be. went at him with the sword yeah, just gutted him. <laughs> yeah, just uh, gutted director 
Uh, Hayao Miyazaki personally corrected or redrew more than 80,000 of the film's 144,000 animation cells. Um, that's a lot of hand drawn. Uh, this is the last major animated motion picture to be filmed on plastic animation cells. Hmm. Produced for about 2.35 or 2.35 billion Japanese yen, approximately 23.5 million. It was the most expensive anime ever made at the time of its release. Um, Mononoke means angry or vengeful spirit. Hime is the Japanese honorific word that means princess, which is the rules of Japanese grammar is placed after a person's name instead of before. As is the custom in many Western languages, when the film's title was translated into English, it was decided that Mononoke would be left as a name rather than translated literally. This also explains why Ashitaki mostly calls the princess by her real name San instead of Mononoke. Um, that part was confusing. With a runtime of 134 princess, I Actually, the entire first time I watched the movie, I'm like, well, who the shit was Princess Mononoke? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's definitely so. Like again, some things needed explanation or at least some sort of pre knowledge. But anyway. um, with a runtime of 134 minutes, it is the fourth longest animated film ever made after Uchu Senka Yamamoto uh, Kanek Sushen from 1983, which is 165 minutes. The Disappearance of Harui Suzumiya, which is 2010, which is 162 minutes. And The Tale of Princess Kayuga from 2013, which is 138 minutes. Uh, Japanese mythology tells that dogs, wolves or are always male-voiced and cats are always female-voiced, regardless of sex. For this reason, a man, Akihiro Miwa, provides the voice of Moro, the mother wolf, in the Japanese version. His casting is perhaps an in-joke to his career as a female impersonator. In the English dub, however, Moro is voiced by uh, Gillian Anderson. Uh, upon attaining the rights, Harvey Weinstein supposedly asked Quentin Tarantino to write the script for the English adaption of the film. Tarantino declined, instead referring Weinstein to Neil Gaiman instead, who ended up writing the English version of the script. Um, yeah, Neil Gaiman is a better choice. Yeah. Director Hiro Miyazaki and his team conduct extensive research and field trips to study the forest of Yakushima Island in J Japan. The uh, research influenced the designs and depiction of the film's lush and immersive forest environments. Um, the cinematography was done by Atsushi Okui, edited by Takeshi si uh, Siyama, uh, music by Joe His Hiske Ishii, uh, release date July 12, 1997, with a runtime of 133 minutes. With a budget of 2.1 billion, uh, it made a box office of 169.7 million. 23.5 million was its budget, but yeah, big, big, big monies, big monies for Studio Ghibli. Probably their biggest staple. Rewatchability. Well, I had to rewatch it, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I this this is probably the second, maybe third time I've watched. I'm gonna say second time I watched this film, but I would rewatch this film again. This is just something I could go back anytime um, and easily rewatch. It's just beautiful artwork through and through. I'll rewatch it again. I just kind of want to absorb some of the just different imagery, like the, 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 the four spirits and the and you know the nature themes. It'll be nice to revisit again and. That scene, of course, where he shoots the guy's arms off. You know, there's, 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 there's I stuff wish there was I a bit see. more of that. Honestly, I could have gone for more of his like oh, yeah. Superman fucking up other samurai antics. Oh like, yeah, man, that, that was good sick stuff. arrows. Yeah, like eat shit, Legolas. <laughs> True. Right. Uh, does it hold up? Hell to the motherfucking yes, it is. Um, yeah, yeah. Slight caveat for me. It does hold up, and it is probably easily the best anime I've seen, which I haven't seen that many. Um, but as a movie, I think Medicine Man's better. <laughs> like, I think, like, again, because <laughs> it's still... You're fucking mad. Still... You're mad, no, it's sir. 
It, no, but it's it's still just like has some of the things about animes that I find just kind of distracting and unnecessary. You know what? The, is a perfect way to describe anime, and it's like it'll probably relate to the kids because I think the kids say that these days. I've heard the younger people say this. They just say some somebody's being very extra. They're like, dude, you're being so extra. That's what anime is. I watch an anime, and I'm just like, dude, you're being so extra. Like, you don't need just chill, chill. And just tell your story, you know. So there's a bit of that. Th this one's not too bad in that regard. Like Redline's way extra. <laughs> Redline's so extra. But, like, but like anime in general, I find leaves me with that extra taste in my mouth. It's like that was a bit much. But this one, I like it. It holds up. But again, as a like movie, it's the most like. It's not my favorite movie. It's probably my favorite anime. But that doesn't translate to like upper echelon movies for me. No. But I, I, I'm pleased that it's your favorite anime. Yeah. Because I, I, believe, I, I fully believe out of all the animes, this one would probably be the one that you would consider your favorite if out of the genre. But again, only upon second viewing. Upon first viewing, I liked Redline more. Ugh. Ugh. at least i was more entertained by it like i was entertained by the first half an hour of redline oh wow i okay i think we need to get into that well, let's though. move on i've been, I've been holding the... back <laughs> i'm pretty sure Eamon's gonna give uh mononoke an a or i mean uh a hold up as well well the from what he was implying he didn't like mononoke as much and it's oh, a shame that he's oh. not here to, to Eamon, air his grievances are you listening? Uh, Tell us in the I, comments. I I I was really looking forward to hearing his thoughts on what he didn't seemingly like about Mononoke, uh, which is flabbergasting because he's like, I like Totoro and Red Line, and I'm like, so you didn't like Mononoke? Because yeah, I was wondering which one he meant. Mm. Um, <laughs> interesting. So see I see sent him a message. See what he says about that, but I mean, this film holds up. Well, let's move on to uh, Theater 3.